Welcome to this edition of our daily devotions, coming to you from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Melvin Christen, and I'm one of the visitation pastors here at the church. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for the opportunity to present your word today. I pray that everything I say will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. It reads as follows. Six days after Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountains, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He replied, Elijah is indeed coming and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him, but they did to him whatever they please. So also the Son of Man is about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood what he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. About a week after Jesus told his disciples that he would suffer, be killed, and be raised to life, he took Peter, James, and John up to a mountain to pray. His personal appearance was changed or transfigured into a glorified form. His face became radiant like the sun, and his clothes became as bright as light, a visible manifestation of his de deity. Moses and Elijah appeared and talked with him. The cloud enveloped the disciples, and they heard the voice of the Lord telling them that Jesus is his son, and they ought to listen to him. When the cloud lifted, Moses and Elijah had disappeared, and Jesus was alone with the disciples, telling them not to tell anyone about their vision until after his resurrection. The word transfigure means to change in outward form or appearance. But the transfiguration of Jesus is not just a change in form of appearance. What we see in the transfiguration is a revelation of who Jesus is. Now, what was the purpose of this transfiguration? The disciples had only known Jesus in his human body. The transfiguration of Jesus into part of his heavenly glory was so that the inner circle of his disciples could gain a greater understanding of Jesus. They now had a greater realization of the deity of Christ. Peter, James, and John occupied a special nearness to Jesus. His glory had been veiled in a body of flesh. They were privileged to see him transfigured. 
the disciples got to see who Jesus really is. Why didn't Moses and Elijah appear? Their appearance represented the law and the prophets. But God's voice made it clear that the law and the prophets must give way to Jesus, who is replacing the old way. One thing that should not be overlooked in this scripture is God's command to the disciples. God said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Then he gave one command. Listen to him. Remember God's command. Listen to Jesus. The world's problem would be solved if everyone would just listen to Jesus. Well, you may ask, how do you listen to Jesus? One way is by reading God's word. The Bible, the Apostle Paul states in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The Bible, that's where we hear the voice of God. That's where we see the words of Jesus. That's where we open ourselves to the spirit of Jesus doing something in our lives to make us more like Jesus. Scripture guides our steps and draws us closer to the Lord. Another way to hear the voice of Jesus is by prayer. Psalm 145 verse 18 states, the Lord is near to all who call upon him in truth. Prayer is a great privilege, blessing and opportunity God has provided his children. As we pray, the Lord reveals himself to us. We hear his love, truth, and authority. As we commune with the Lord, he brings peace and comfort and gives wisdom and understanding. When you listen to Jesus, listen not with a closed heart, ignoring him, or with a resentful heart, but listen with an open heart, following and devoting yourself to him. And there is a scene in The Wizard of Oz in which Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion encounter the real wizard. You remember, right? The giant screen had shown a powerful, larger-than-life person whose booming voice rings out across Emerald City. Toto pulls back the curtain, however, and everyone finds that the wizard is just a man. It's all showbiz, lights and amplification. His cry of pay no attention to the man behind the curtain falls on deaf air. When the curtain is pulled back, he is seen for what he is. In our text today, the curtain is pulled back and someone is seen for who he is too. Unlike the Wizard of Oz though, this person is far more than just a man. Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John. These three apostles saw the curtain pulled back for Jesus and they were awed by his glory and power. Pulling back the curtain shows just who Jesus is. The divinity of Jesus has been revealed. Believers know who Jesus is. They know who Jesus really is. Listen to him. Let us pray. Eternal God, Thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for pulling back the curtain and showing us who Jesus is. Give us the wisdom to listen to Jesus. It is in his name we pray. Amen.